Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 21st, 2023. Let's get into it. So, I, uh, by the way, I got the comment because I said I was going to get a new speaker. And she said, well, probably the echo is coming off your wooden floors. And if you put down carpet, I'm not going to carpet my Florida house. <laughs> so, so I guess we're just going to have to put up with the echo on these videos. Now, I've got the mic as close as I can. Uh, that was the advice that I got from a wonderful uh, listener to my channel. All 10 of you. So I guess that one person... Uh, by the way, the dog's gone. That's my ex-wife's dog. I don't know when I'll ever see it again. I do love making the videos with him. Uh, but uh, And so I only get him when she goes on... Well, she took all the money. So she goes on trips all over the world with their uh, a millionaire sister, and uh, they do crazy things. So let's get into the, uh, the news. Because, um, well, I, I guess uh, I want to start with the um, a video. Because... Uh, what I'm shocked, I'm absolutely shocked because you, you know that obviously I don't like Democrats. <laughs> I mean, if you watch my channel at all, you know, I think that the open borders, uh, the hundreds of thousands of people dying from fentanyl, uh, all of their policies, the, uh, you know, defund the police. Uh, I just don't see anything that Democrats stand for that I can stand by. But I never thought in a million years they would be for genocide. And by the way, I, I've, I've completely changed my tune. I was trying to call it ethnic cleansing. There was another term. I'll, I'll come up with it later. So, no, man. I mean, we're at 14,000 dead civilians in Gaza. Uh, they went in to the hospital. Well, if you watch Mark Levin or Sean Hannity or Todd Stearns or any of the right-wing hosts... Oh, yeah, they found all kinds of Hamas tunnels <laughs> underneath that hospital. Oh, that's complete bullshit. I mean, they, they, there was nothing that they found at the hospital. And, and so I want to watch you. I want you to watch a video about the babies uh, that, that on incubators that had to be evacuated. And this video just briefly talks about it. There were hundreds, if not thousands of people that died. I mean, because I just have a deep empathy uh, because I laid helpless in the hospital after I broke my neck for three months. And I can't imagine uh, if a foreign force had come in and said, guess what? You have to evacuate. Well, there's no way they could have got me out. I just would have freaking died right there in the hospital. And that's the way I picture these helpless people laying in their, their hospital beds. And the, and the only thing they got is the nurses to come in and, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be graphic here. Drain your damn penis, you know. Do the stuff, you know. Roll you over so that you can, like, you know, don't get bed sores and stuff. I mean, and so all those people died. I, I You know, I can't believe how bloodthirsty Democrats are. It just freaking blows my mind. Let's watch that video. Well, humanitarian conditions worsen in southern Gaza as well. The threat to displaced Palestinians comes not just from uh, Israeli strikes, but also the harsh environment itself as we approach December. Canadian-Palestinian journalist Mansour Shuman is in the city of Khan Yunus. The last uh, couple of hours saw very heavy rainfall and uh, single-digit temperatures. Uh, unfortunately, uh, given the number of people who are displaced from the north coming to the south, including those who were forced out of Shifa, some coming to Nasser Hospital. The situation here, from a living perspective, is below subhuman. Uh, even the tent where I'm staying, for example, has been flooded with water. So what about the hundreds of thousands of others with children and women around them? It's extremely difficult to stay alive right now here in Khan Yunis, given the cold weather, given the rain, given the lack of food, water, electricity and fuel. Subhuman conditions, according to Canadian-Palestinian journalist Mansour Shuman. Now, another uh, aspect of uh, events that we're following very closely, that of the situation surrounding babies. And 31 prematurely born infants have been evacuated from the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City by the WHO 
A second UN and Palestinian Red Crescent mission relocated family members and staff as well from the territory's largest medical centre. Gaza's health ministry says the Israeli army has completely taken over that site as well, with the director general of Gazan hospitals outlining the difficulties of supporting evacuated children. These babies have suffered greatly during their stay at Al-Shifa hospital due to the suspension of all health services in the complex. We found that even the water used for their formula was contaminated. It was not properly sterilized due to the severe lack of resources. Consequently, they suffered from vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, leading to significant harm. Some of them experienced blood poisoning and severe infections. Moreover, the premature babies weren't kept warm enough leading to some of them experiencing low body temperatures. Typically, one nurse is assigned to every three premature babies. However, due to their ongoing siege preventing rotations, there was a severe shortage of medical staff available. Additionally, there was a critical shortage of medications, including antibiotics, IV fluids and supplements, as these supplies were not allowed to reach the hospital by the occupation. We received a total of 31 babies out of 39, as eight babies have been martyred including two who died this morning at Al-Shifa Medical Complex. All right, so there you go. There you go. So that's the first video that I wanted you to see. Uh, I was going to um, get into the uh, January 6th footage, uh, but you know what? I'm just going to tell you. Go watch Redacted. That's their channel. Uh, they give now, now that the footage is out, we see how the Democrats perpetrated a complete lie. And, of course, you got Liz Cheney. She was called herself a Republican. She was a Democrat. And uh, and then, uh, what was that, Kins Kinziger or whatever that freaking guy giving his little dinosaur tears or crocodile tears or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, so he was on the committee. Uh, we, we, we now know that that was a complete lie. And uh, by the way, I told everybody that back in 2000, but I was on Parler. And then Parler got nuked by, um, by Amazon and Google. It was a, it was, and it just got wiped out of existence. I had 85,000 followers. I, good God, maybe someday I'll, I, I got, well, 600 now on X. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man, when you, when you're a nobody, it, it, it takes a while to, to build up uh, a following. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I, I always told everybody it was a setup. It was, it was complete fallacy. And so now we know, now we know that, uh, Nancy Pelosi and the FBI perpetrated this whole thing, and the Capitol Police were in on it. If you watch the uh, footage from the videos, uh, they were shooting. I mean, the crowd was perfectly peaceful, and then they, they took out the, uh, the stink grenades, and then they, they hit them with uh, paint guns, and, uh, and they pissed off the crowd. Now, should the crowd have been at the Capitol building? No. But when you've got a bunch of FBI and a bunch of government agents that, that are taking the crowd from the protest, which is where Trump was giving his speech, and moving them to the Capitol building and say, oh, you got to you gotta go in. And then, of course, we got footage of the Capitol Police walking them into the building and fist bumping them and putting their arm around them and escorting them throughout the building. And then and we've got still, we still got political prisoners in jail. I, it's just outrageous. I don't know. So, um, uh, We'll get, uh, let's get back to the news here. Uh, the Hootie Rebels, uh, the, what was it, the Canadian prepper, he called them the, the honey badgers, <laughs> the honey badgers of the Middle East. And uh, they've shot missiles at Israel, which our carriers, uh, they, they took down those missiles before they could hit Israel. Uh, but then they went out and they, they seized a uh, an ocean ship or a, I, I wanted to say it was a cargo ship, but they, anyway, they seized it and they said it was an Israeli ship. But it's, it turns out that none of the crew was really Israeli. But it does tell you, show you. I'm just kind of, kind of try to illustrate in this video how things are escalating. The, the escalation to the escalation ladders, the Duran. Uh, by the way, watch the Duran on on uh, YouTube, Rumble, Rockfin, wherever they are. I wish I. I got to get on Rockfin. I got to get on Telegram. But God dang, I only got so much time. I Hell, I was out working in the rock on the side of my house trying to... I got two trees I got to get taken out. So it's a miracle I even make these videos. Of course, I get I get no money too. So it's not like I do this for, uh, you know, monetary reasons. Um, so then we got Hezbollah. Now, Israel went in and they struck deep in Lebanon. 
And I can't give you the exact numbers. You can watch some other videos. Uh, but that's a huge escalation. They're trying to provoke Hezbollah to attack Israel. Because what they're hoping is that the United States is going to come in and blow the hell out of uh, Hezbollah. Well, Hezbollah's got enough rockets to blow the shit out of Israel. So I'm not sure that, you know, we can get our F-35s there or anything to, to do much good. If Hez if they really provoke, I mean, because, and, and, and so you're seeing kind of a ramping up of the escalation. You're seeing Hezbollah shooting more rockets. You got the Houthis taking a ship. You got the Houthis sending more rockets. Uh, the only per people that are staying completely out of the uh, event, of course, we've got attacks on our bases in Iraq uh, that's taken place, and they say that they're Iranian uh, militias, and Iran saying, no, we got nothing to do with it, man. <laughs> they're doing that on their own. Uh, and I tend to believe Iran, because Iran's got... What you don't understand is how heavily armed Iran is. Uh, Iran didn't develop, as far as I know, a nuclear weapon. A lot of people think that they, they chose a different route. They went and they took their technology and they developed this, this missile technology and they dispersed it all over their country. So that even if we go in and there and we bomb the shit out of Iran, um, they got enough rockets to blow the hell out of Israel. I mean, I, I would say Israel will cease to exist. And there's not a damn thing the United States could do about it. Even if we nuked them, I'm not even sure we would get all the rockets. So, yeah, okay. So if you want a war with Iran, you warmongering uh, Democrat lunatics and Lindsey Graham and Mitt Romney and let's Mitch McConnell and some of the rhinos, yeah, go for it, man. And by the way, Iran's got uh, uh, torpedoes that will take out... We got a, a carrier group sitting in the Persian Gulf. You don't think that they've got the weapons to hit those carrier that carrier group? I, I dare say we could lose that whole carrier group. Uh, it, it, it's going to be... It, it, things are getting crazy. Things are definitely getting crazy. I hope you're watching. So... And, and I got this just footnote. So Democrats continue to support the Palestinian genocide, and that's all I'm going to call it at this point. It's not ethnic cleansing. Uh, it's, it's genocide. 14,000 dead civilians in the hospital was a joke, and of course I already talked about that. So let's watch another video on the uh, Palestinian uh, extermination. That was the other word, extermination. So whether you want to call it ethnic cleansing, extermination, or genocide, I think they're all basically the same. Let's watch that video. Proving that they're not a casual threat to be ignored by Israel and even the U.S. Yemen's armed forces announced on Sunday that they seized what they claim to be an Israeli ship in the southern Red Sea, detaining all of the 52 people on board the vessel. The seizure came as part of the Houthis' support for Palestinians amid the ongoing Israeli war on Gaza and following warnings by Yemen that if the war continues, Israel will face consequences. A few days ago, the Houthis issued a graphic with captions in Hebrew, Arabic and English that said, we will sink your ships. The graphic showed an Israeli commercial ship on fire. The spokesman of Yemen's armed forces, Yahya Sari, warned that if Israel's quote, barbaric killing of Palestinians continues, any ships owned or operated by Israeli companies or carrying the Israeli flag as well as those cooperating with Israel will be a legitimate target for Yemen's armed forces. The Yemeni armed forces stress that they will continue to conduct military operations against the Israeli enemy until the end of the aggression against the Gaza Strip and the heinous crimes that have been committed against our Palestinian brothers in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. The impounded ship was sailing from Turkey to India. Dubbed Galaxy Leader, the vessel is allegedly registered under a British company which is partially owned by Israeli tycoon Abraham Angar. The ship was reportedly leased out to a Japanese company at the time of the seizure. Israel says the ship is neither owned nor operated by Israel and that no Israeli citizens were on board the vessel. However, in a statement released after the confiscation of the ship, the Israeli Prime Minister's office called the move, quote, an act of Iranian terrorism that expresses a leap in their aggression. This is another Iranian act of terrorism that represents an escalation in Iran's belligerence against the citizens of the free world, with concomitant international ramifications vis-à-vis -vis the security of global shipping routes. 
Well, Tel Aviv's claim that the ship is not an Israeli one is viewed by some observers as a signal that Tel Aviv does not want to engage itself in a tit-for-tat with Iran, as the Houthis are known to be backed by Tehran, and their actions are in line with Iran's interests. But regardless of who owns the ship, Yemen's move marks a serious escalation in the region, and it concerns over a potential regional spillover of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that the Islamic Republic has spoken of time and again. While other forces under the umbrella of the so-called axis of resistance, including Lebanon's Hezbollah and Iraqi militias, have uh, already entered the fight, each in their own way, the Houthis in Yemen have also proven to be a serious threat to Israel, despite being some 1,400 miles away from the conflict. In the early days of the war, the Houthis declared that they would step in to help Hamas, and they have since launched several cruise missiles and drones toward Israel, which were intercepted, of course, midway by U.S. warships. The Pentagon has said that Yemen will not pose a serious threat, perhaps because of its long distance from the war. But this last move will definitely make the U.S. and Israel think twice about the Houthis. All right, so there you go, there you go. Uh, getting on to completely different topics, uh, Rumble was hit today by a DOS attack from China. That surprises me. I mean, I haven't seen, I don't even watch anything. Well, I guess I'm just kind of focused on the Middle East and Ukraine. Uh, maybe, uh, it, and by the way, I mean, you know, the Biden administration's in cahoots with China, so maybe they teamed up together and uh, wanted to take down Rumble. Uh, the Democrats did, so we'll see. Uh, Ukraine, uh, by the way, I, I, I don't know if you're following along on Ukraine. Um, I, it just seems like, it, well, as a Slavic nation, it's dead. They, they're, they're going down into, what, teenage kids to try to throw them up on the front lines. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, good. The, the uh, United States is talking about allowing uh, vax, unvaxxed soldiers back into the military. Imagine that. Imagine that. And, and by the way, I, I encourage you to watch, I think it might have been yesterday's video where I talked about the vaccine. And, uh, and I kind of... You know, you got to be real careful on YouTube. I can't say anything bad about it. Get your booster to you, booster to you, booster. Throw a freaking mask on your head. Hell, wear a condom over your whole body and be protected. That's all I got to say. But uh, definitely watch that video because I gave a good analogy, which I thought you might like. Um, so uh, and, and so what, what I'm seeing, and everybody says, oh, you're a, a Palestinian, uh, you know, Hamas uh, supporter. No, I'm... I'm, I'm trying to stop uh, Israel from committing suicide. If, if Iran's attacked, all those missiles are coming down on Israel. If the Houthis are attacked, all those missiles are coming down on Israel. I, I don't see any good future. And of course, the whole world hates Israel and the United States right now because of the warmongering Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, oh my God, I never thought they'd be so freaking bloodthirsty. How can you watch all of these... Babies and, you know, we've already seen the videos. What is wrong with you people? You, <sighs> all right, all right, okay. I'm getting on my box. So if you want to see how things are escalating against Israel and the United States in the uh, Middle East, so here's breaking from DD Geopolitics. Uh, you might want to follow them on uh, X. Um, breaking, South Africa calls on the ICC to issue an arrest warrant for Netanyahu. <laughs> and they should. They should. Uh, he's a war criminal. That leader of uh, the uh, Zionist in Israel. He's a maniac. The South African government has called on the International uh, Criminal Court, ICC, to issue an arrest warrant for Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu by mid-December. Minister in the Presiden Presidency Kambu Dizo, uh, good Lord, I can't pronounce this, N-T-S-H-E-V-H-E-N-I, Neshaveni, said that if the IOC did not do this, I think they meant I ICC, would, it would signal a total failure of global governance. The world cannot simply stand by and watch, she said. South Africa, along with Bangladesh, Bolivia, Camaros, and Djibouti, 
submitted a referral to the ICC to investigate whether war crimes and crimes against humanity have been committed in Gaza. The country has announced the withdrawal of its diplomats from Israel and suggested that the position of Israel's ambassador to Pretoria will become is becoming unattainable, untenable. This is along with many countries around the world. Do you realize how isolated the United States and Israel are becoming? You warmongering Democrat lunatics? You're going to want to support these Zionists in Israel? I don't know. I, I'm just saying. And, of course, you rhino Republicans. Well, they, this was interesting. There was a leftist uh, meltdown over uh, Argentina. Now, I'm not sure this election in Argentina is uh, going to be a good thing. Because Javier is saying that he's going to move toward the United States uh, and, and peg his currency to the U.S. dollar. You know, my opinion, I don't think the U.S. dollar is going to last much longer. So I think he's making a huge mistake there. And so he's going to get out of bricks. It seems like Argentina, no matter what they do. <laughs> they always, I mean, even though I, I think the guy's got some great ideas. If, you, if he's got some right wing policies that I think are going to be good for Argentina, but he's going to destroy their financial system by associating it with the U.S. dollar. I mean, and if you want to know what's going on in Argentina, they're at 120% inflation. What are we at about, uh, well, I'd say about 15% here in the United States. So anyway, uh, so he's going to ally uh, with the United States. Now, will it work? I, I think if Trump becomes president, because he's friends with uh, Donald Trump, uh, Javier is uh, in Argentina, um, they might be able to work things up. And because uh, I think Trump might be able to save save us because he's a businessman. You know, he knows how to refinance debt. He can roll that off. Uh, you know, he'll just basically give the treasuries back to China that they own and say, you know, well, you know, we're broke. Uh, and so, you know, he he could possibly navigate us out of the coming financial disaster. That's it. Well, of course, we got to finish you off with a Russian uh, piece of hardware. Let's watch that. Отрабатываем цель, сворачиваемся и уезжаем. Peace out. Stay free. All right. Dang it. I forgot two last things. I always put the stuff on my tables to remind me. This is a book. I think I featured this in, in previous videos by Sandra Freed. 50 Hikes in Central Florida. The only reason I'm showing you that is she's got a good hike for me to do. Uh, like I said, I'm working on the uh, rock project beside the house, but I'll be getting that hike in here soon. So... Definitely Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble, Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. I'll be putting up that hike probably here within the next couple of weeks. And then always I try to help you out in some kind of way besides geopolitics. Uh, I, a new stock that um, it was featured by Redacted. I have done not done it. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you that I, I don't have time to do all of this, but it sounded like a, it gave a great presentation on, on Redacted. AKEMF, AKEMF, Alaska Energy Metals. Um, I put a little bid on on that. It was I haven't picked it up. It was at like 87 cents a share. Uh, I guess it's gone up. Probably uh, who knows? I mean, I haven't looked at the price. Maybe it's at five dollars by now. That's usually the way it works when, <laughs> whenever I find a stock. You know, and I go, hey, that's a good stock. I'll put a limit buy on it. And then the next thing I know. It's doubled, it's tripled, it's quadrupled, it's, a, it's up a hundredfold and I never bought it because I bid right where it was and it just went to the moon. And that's usually how it works for me. Peace out. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, 
That rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.